Hello there. You've probably heard before that genes make us who we are. But did you know that humans share a lot of their genes with other species? For instance, humans share about 98% of their genes with chimpanzees, 92% with mice, 44% with fruit flies, 26% with yeast and even up to 18% with plants. How is this possible? Well first we need to understand what genes are. Genes are sections of your DNA which give instructions to make you who you are. How do genes do this? They do it with proteins. And no, I don't mean the ones that you scrambled up for breakfast. Every gene in your DNA, which is kind of like your blueprint, gives instructions to make proteins. These proteins can be enzymes which speed up reactions in your body, or structural like the type in your hair. The oxygen carried by your red blood cells are transported by the protein hemoglobin. Motor proteins cause muscle contractions. The egg whites that provide nutrition to chicken embryos are storage proteins. We have signal proteins like hormones which carry messages between cells. And we also have receptor proteins that detect light in our eyes. Proteins are everywhere in living things. The most important type of proteins though, which makes you human, are the gene regulatory proteins. These proteins work by turning the expression of genes on and off. What do you mean by expression of genes? As I mentioned before, your DNA is the blueprint that provides instruction for making proteins. In a process called transcription, an enzyme attaches to your DNA and reads the genes to create, or transcribe, a new strand called RNA. This RNA is then used in a process called translation in which the RNA strand is translated by another enzyme called a ribosome. The ribosome creates a protein based on these instructions. This is how a gene is expressed. What are gene regulatory proteins? Gene regulatory proteins are genes that regulate, or turn on and off, the expression of other genes. The proteins that are created from these genes return to the DNA strand and bind to it at the location of the gene that needs to be turned on or off. These proteins are also called transcription regulators because they can control if transcription, or creation of RNA can occur. They come in two types, repressors, switch genes off by preventing the transcription enzyme from being able to attach to the DNA. And then there are activators, which turn genes on by providing a start point for the transcription enzyme to attach and begin transcribing. Why are activators and repressors so important? Well, they play a major role in our development. Have you ever noticed how similar different animals are as early embryos? No, I don't spend a lot of time looking at embryos. Well, let's start. As you can see on the left, the fish in salamander embryos look very similar halfway through development. But the tortoise and the chick in the center look a lot different from the fish in salamander even though they look almost identical at first. The rabbit and human on the right also start out looking the same as the other four but they develop differently as well. This is because of a certain set of regulatory genes called Hox genes. Hox genes code for Hox proteins, which regulate what genes will be expressed. They determine the body layout, what types of structures will develop, and where in the embryo. They don't create the actual parts though, they only provide the plan. For instance, in the fruit fly, a certain hox gene activates the genes that create legs and wings on a segment of the insect. This segment has the ability to also develop eyes and antennae, but the hox gene doesn't activate it, so they don't develop. When scientists manipulated the hox genes of a fruit fly embryo, they were able to get this. A mutant fly which has legs on its head. Scientists also found that a duplication of a certain section created a four-winged fly. When there is a mutation in a hox gene, the structural development of the embryo can go wrong, creating mutations like this. You see, the reason humans share so many genes with other species is because of these hox genes. For example, humans and birds share the same BMP4 gene that plays a part in facial development. In both humans and birds, the hox genes act like an executive, in a hierarchy. They activate a gene, which then activates another, in a cascading motion, that results in some of the same genes developing different parts, depending on the species. In humans, the BMP4 gene is activated to develop the lower jaw and teeth. In birds, the same hox genes activate a different set of genes which activate the same BMP4 gene but it is used to develop a beak. Same genes but different instructions. In early embryo development, these Hox genes are still in the process of directing the genes, 
like a construction manager directs the workers at a construction site. This is why so many species look identical at first, but develop into very different species. Even when they have similar genes. What activates the Hox genes and tells them to start activating other genes? Well, 